Have you got any advice on dealing with defeat? Yes, you should go stand behind your television. I'm going to regret asking this, but why should you stand behind your television? Because it teaches you to face setbacks. Oh dear, we've got a rather self-satisfied looking fellow on this week's card. The Five of Swords is a card of defeat. In fact, I was defeated the first time I tried to make this video. I keep saying I feel like I live through the cards, so it's interesting that the last one was the Four of Swords. In that video I mentioned Rachel Pollock's quote about holding back from a fight until there's a better chance of winning, and that's definitely what happened here. I just gave up. However, I've come back to fight another day, and to see if I can wipe the smug look off this arsehole's face. In the key to the tarot, Arthur Edward Waite says, a disdainful man looks after two retreating and dejected figures. Their swords lie upon the ground. He carries two others on his left shoulder, and a third sword in his hand point to earth. He's the master in possession of the field. Now context is a huge part of this card, in terms of deciding which of the figures on the card represents the querent and the meaning. This is obviously determined by the other cards in the spread, and the nature of the question. I'll get to that later, but i found that in most cases people tend to identify with the two figures who've been defeated. Rachel Pollock says one of the most difficult cards, and one of the reasons why some people find the Rider Pack too negative, and yet it mirrors a real life situation that most people will experience at some point in their lives. Later on in the Hermetic section I'm going to talk about the psychology of defeat, and you may have noticed that I've been bringing psychology up more and more recently. That's entirely because we're in the suit of thought and intellect. For me personally, the tarot and the wider world of ritual magic is intrinsically linked with psychology, and I think connecting it with those concepts is one of the most valuable things we can do. One of my favourite books by Israel Regardi is The Middle Pillar. Not just because he brilliantly explains two of the most important rituals in the occult, but also because this is where he developed his psycho-spiritual theories. There's a whole chapter on psychology and magic where he covers this in detail. Now none of this is to say that the other suits aren't also hugely connected to psychology, but the swords are where this kind of thing becomes really apparent. When we're dealing with intellect, conflict and cold hard truth, it stands to reason that that's going to involve some study of the mind and human behaviour. Doctor, I feel like no one understands me. Now what do you mean by that? Getting back to the card, the main figure can represent a real person, who's sickeningly gleeful in his triumph over others. Schadenfreude is a word that comes to mind. It's a German word that's found its way into common parlance. The dictionary definition of Schadenfreude is pleasure derived from another person's misfortune so you could call it being a bad winner. I'm reminded of the phrase, it is not enough that I succeed, everyone else must fail. That quote has been attributed to many people, but apparently it originally came from Genghis Khan, who plundered his way across Asia in the 13th century. He'd make a good contender for the fella on the five. Basically, I'm talking about the kind of smug git who gets a little taste of success and then feels obliged to lord it up and rub it in everybody's face. The kind of person who takes more satisfaction from other people's defeat than they do from their own victory. It can also mean being defeated by a situation. We've tried so hard to accomplish something and it's ended in failure. I'm sure we've all felt like this at one time or another. Not just the failure itself, but the embarrassment that goes along with it. Rachel Pollock says they have lost some battle, and now the whole world bears down on them. The water choppy, the sky jagged. A sense of humiliation as well as weakness goes with their defeat. <laughs> There's a lot going on with the Thoth card, so strap yourself in. In the Book of Thoth, Alistair Crowley says the hilts of the swords form an inverted pentagram, always a symbol of somewhat sinister tendency. Here matters are even worse. None of the hilts resemble any of the others, and their blades are crooked or broken. So I've talked before about the Golden Dawn's opinion on the inverted pentagram, and how it represents matter over spirit. I just feel the need to reiterate that I've got nothing against anyone who looks at it differently, whether that's Satanists, Luciferians or anyone else. My philosophy has always been that as long as you're not hurting anyone, fill your boots. However, this is a ritual magic channel, so we are sticking with the Golden Dawn formulas here. Now it's interesting that all of the fives in the Thoth deck have an upside down pentagram, with the exception of the Five of Wands. I've not found a concrete reason for this so far, but Lon Milo de Ket talks about how Crowley felt a special affinity with this card, as it represents the first decan of Leo. Leo is the ascendant in Crowley's natal chart, so maybe he just couldn't bring himself to put an inverted pentagram on the Five of Wands. Anyway, Crowley goes on to talk about how the defeat in the card could be a result of us not standing up for ourselves when necessary, or being deceived by someone. 
He says the intellect has been enfeebled by sentiment. The defeat is due to pacifism. Treachery may also be implied. Going back to Lon Milo de Quet, he points out that if you look closely at the card, some of the symbols in the background form swastikas. He says as this card was painted at the very height of England's struggle with Nazi Germany, it's easy to speculate that Harris was either consciously or unconsciously projecting magical defeat on this hated enemy. Sword number 5 has been added to the Sforza Marseille cards, making them look even more flowery and swordy. If you ever need to give 5 swords as a gift and you're not sure how to present them, fear not, the Solar Busker's got you covered. There's even a lovely bow round the swords as a nice finishing touch. There will be a constant loss where we cannot imagine the amount of suffering. Oh good, we'll look forward to that then. The hermetic title for the Five of Swords is Lord of Defeat. The title of the Thoth card is simply Defeat, so we're exclusively talking about getting beaten here. Now of course, this is a fact of life and something that we're all going to go through at various times in our lives. However, this doesn't mean that we need to be defeated by... Defeat. I was reading in Psychology Today about ways to bounce back from an embarrassing defeat. It's a really interesting article, I'll link it in the description, but the different concepts include acknowledging your embarrassment. Common wisdom tells us that the only way to deal with our feelings is to actually feel them, so we can process them and move on. Putting things into perspective is another important aspect, so that would mean asking yourself questions like, am I going to lose my house, or did anyone get hurt? If the answer is no, then there's a solid chance that we're making a bigger deal out of it than it really is. The chances are that we've just added yet another item to the list of things that we cringe about when they randomly bubble up to the surface of our minds. I think probably the most important aspect is the idea of self-compassion and forgiving ourselves. It's inevitable that we're going to feel some self-loathing when we fail at something, but at least we put ourselves out there and had a go. If nothing else, we can learn from our defeat and be better prepared in the future. I think the ultimate defeat is when we don't even try in the first place. The Five of Swords corresponds to the Aquarius zodiac sign and to the planet Venus. So it's the goddess of love and the cosmic water boy for this one. Now I've been having a bit of trouble working out how sensual Venus and sensitive Aquarius fit together with the Five of Swords. Lon Milo de Quet came to my rescue once again. He says Venus rules Aquarius and for a moment she's very happy to have him as her date. Unfortunately, this sensitive pair has shown up at the wrong party. I suppose it's a bit like taking your new girlfriend out for a meal, only to find that the restaurant's been taken over by the Mafia. He goes on to say, Naturally, Venus and Aquarius volunteer to be peacemakers, but they are just too nice, too peaceful, too weak to handle themselves in this violent neighbourhood. The inevitable result is defeat. Sorry kids, I hear things are much quieter down in Tiferet. And he's absolutely right, they certainly are. Some might say a little bit too quiet, but we'll be getting to that next time. The Five of Swords celebrities include makeup enthusiast Paul Stanley from KISS, saucy comedian Benny Hill, and lover of the Russian queen Rasputin. There was a cat that really was gone. The Five of Swords resides in the world of Yetzirah and sits at the fifth Sephira of Geberar on the Pillar of Severity. So I've talked before about how all the fives in the tarot were situated at the Sephira of Geberar on the Tree of Life, and we can see that reflected in the designs. However, I've also talked about the importance of not just seeing Geberar as a bad part of the tree. There's a time and a place for severity. Sometimes we need to assert ourselves and stand up for what we believe in. It can be the failure to act with appropriate severity that leads to defeat, which is what Crowley was talking about earlier. It's also worth mentioning that there are multiple names for the Sephira, so Geberar can go under the name of Justice or Strength. I've even seen it called Terror, but they are just referring to the same thing. Also, we find that the middle Sephira on each pillar is what gives that pillar its name. According to Samuel McGregor Mathers, Geberar, strength, to which the divine name of Elohim Gibor, the Elohim of strength, is referred. It is likewise to be remembered that from this Sephira, the Pillar of Justice takes its title. The Five of Swords herb is mistletoe. There is an old tradition that lightning never strikes a tree in which mistletoe is growing. Ow! 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 What's going on? Ha <laughs> ha! They didn't say anything about the cretin standing next to it. But what does it all mean? I think the meaning of the Five of Swords is pretty straightforward. It means getting beaten by someone or something. The reason people find it difficult when it appears in a spread is because it can be a hard one to relate to. Which character represents us? 
where it says degradation, destruction, revocation, infamy, dishonor, loss, and the variants and analogues of these. It's another bad one. Bad. Now all of the swords in this suit are two-edged, in that they cut both ways, and this card is certainly no exception. So let's see this from the point of view of the arsehole with the grin on his face. In the Little Book of Tarot, Barbara Moore talks about how one person's triumph means another person's defeat, so we're playing a zero-sum game here. Does winning mean more to us than the well-being of the other person? Are we losing friends and making enemies just for the thrill of victory? She says you might win, but the cost will be so high that you'll wish you hadn't played. You know, like those carnival games where you end up paying $67 for a $3 prize. I think the important message here is that we should stay humble in our victories and not try to devalue other people when we succeed. Rachel Pollack says all the five show conflict or loss. Swords carry this idea to the extreme of defeat. Sometimes the meaning of the card will focus on the larger figure in the foreground, the victor. More commonly, we identify with the two figures turned away. So from bad winners, we're moving on to sore losers. If we do find ourselves in the position of the other two figures on the card, and it's inevitable that we will, then I think it's equally important that we should try to remain graceful in our defeat. Kicking off is only going to make us cringe even more when we look back on the situation with a new perspective. We should try to feel the emotion, forgive ourselves, and move on with wisdom. Mind your purse, because soon an attempt will be made on your money. Might be wise to invest in a bum bag to keep your money safe. To my American viewers, that's what we call a fanny pack, which has a very different meaning in the UK. If we read for a married man, it urges him to mind those who are eager to call on his wife. Oh dear, the tarot soap opera is still in full swing. Quite literally in this case. If to a married woman, she must mind a person who appears to be following her husband's every move. Careful ladies, sounds like you need to keep an eye on your husbands too. Everyone seems to be at it like rabbits. When the Five of Swords appears reversed, the meaning doesn't change very much. Wade gives us a lengthy description for this one. He says, the same, burial and obsequies. Calm down, Dickens, we haven't got all day. Anyway, funerals seem to be his focus. Rachel Pollock talks about the aftermath of defeat and how we can carry it with us. She says the painful quality remains, even though the emphasis may shift. Where right side up indicates the moment of defeat, reversed extends this to the despair felt afterwards. When this card appears in the reverse, it tells you that it will not take long for you to attend some solemn ceremony, where the purpose is anything but pleasant. I'm sorry for your loss. Is there anything I can do? Could you give me the Wi-Fi password, please? You realize we're about to bury your husband? Is that all lowercase? The big takeaway from the Five of Swords is about trying to stay graceful, in triumph and in defeat. Remember, we're in the suit of intellect here, so we're not talking about physical catastrophes. These things are just mental constructs, so let's not allow them to defeat us. Rudyard Kipling nails this in the poem If. If you haven't read it, I'll put a link in the description, but this section really rings true for me with this card. He says, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same. Looks like we've taken a beating this week, but chin up, I'm sure there's happier cards to come. <laughs> May the coming days bring you strength and endurance. Until next time.